Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels for ESA Web TV, and I'm here today speaking with Pierre Luigi Silvestrin, who is the head of the Future Systems Department at ESA or the Fee Department. Now, Pierre Luigi, how is ESA driving innovation with the Fee Department? Well, the Fee Department has been created about one year ago, or a little bit over uh, one year ago, and became head of it on uh, 1st of November, and uh, now encompasses a number of uh, um, groups and divisions that have been engaged in innovation for a long time, actually. Uh, the major group is the Future Missions and uh, Instruments Division at Testec, which is the place where we do innovation, especially for the upstream, so for the uh, space segment part. We have proposal, we receive proposal from the community, typically, for instance, for explorers from scientists, and then we after selection, we develop these ideas into missions and we create or we uh, bring to maturity the technologies that are needed for these missions. So this is a very, very important part of the activity of the department. And of course, there are many corollary additional activities of this division to prepare the technologies at large. Soon we will launch, for instance, uh, some new activities. Actually, we are already doing some on small satellites and we will expand this particular domain uh, further. So this is one particular area. Then the department has uh, a number of offices here in, uh, in Ezring, uh, among which the uh, system architect office, this idea is uh, already existing in the past, but now much more made more systematic here. Innovation is in bringing the big picture together. So looking at the system of systems of the different uh, components, both space and ground. Particularly for space, we see that we have a major uh, expansion of possibilities now with so-called new space or a space 4.0, which new space uh, is a subset. So we are trying to uh, bring all together in order to have the synergies of the different elements uh, in an architecture that ESA can help uh, drive uh, with new initiatives, not only the missions that uh, we do for uh, the scientific community, the missions we do for the meteorological use users with UMESAT and for monitoring the Earth with the European Union, the Copernicus program, but again in a different uh, directions, including also non-orbiting systems. For instance, we are looking at high altitude pseudo-satellites and uh, other uh, uh, sources of information that can be pulled together in order to give a much better uh, capability for services and uh, understanding of the Earth. Um, the Fee Lab, I should not forget, uh, is uh, in fact created uh, with the Fee Department since uh, last year. It's still uh, uh, basically uh, growing uh, every day with uh, people and uh, with ideas. Uh, people come from all different uh, uh, sides of Europe and even beyond bringing uh, entirely new innovative ideas that have mostly to do with the ability to spin in technologies from uh, uh, other worlds uh, other than space, in particular with information technology uh, such as uh, artificial intelligence related technologies and beyond uh, uh, in the future we plan to also look uh, into uh, uh, new uh, sources again uh, that are totally not considered today uh, in, the, in the landscape of Earth's observation. Now we're wrapping up, of course, Fee Week, and we've been looking at a variety of topics. Is there anything in particular that you're going to bring back from this week, bring back to the drawing board with your colleagues here at ESA that we might want to incorporate within the department? Yes, there are very many uh, areas of uh, fast development. I was very impressed how the uh, artificial intelligence uh, paradigms are being applied now to data not only in the downstream, so uh, in the processing and the retrieval of information, but also in innovative uh, ways uh, with uh, new proposals on board. We have to see how this uh, practically can be implemented and uh, what are the boundary constraints and the opportunities, but it seems very promising. So this is something we'll certainly work on. I mentioned already that we are going to expand activities on small satellites, so both the technologies enabling them 
as well as the use of the data from small satellites and how they fit in the larger uh, picture of the system of systems that we are architecting. And uh, I think the fee week will uh, really leave uh, an important legacy of uh, new ideas and we will uh, certainly go through all the uh, inputs provided. Uh, the talks are all available, I believe, uh, soon online and uh, we have really a, a, a great uh, uh, a lot of work in front of us to uh, really deliver now uh, not only the flow of idea, I always say fee stands for future uh, because the fee corresponds to the uh, F in, in the uh, Latin alphabet of future but is also a symbol typically of the flow of the flux. So this is great, the flux of ideas is, is, is fantastic but we need also the delta uh, meaning we need also to see the actual uh, developments, the actual changes in the things that we do. So we are looking forward to implement many of these ideas. Well, it sounds like exciting times ahead for ESA Pierluigi. Thank you so much for joining us. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space, about our planet, or about fee, you can visit our website at www.esa.int.